We might have noticed the winds have picked up. There are leaves everywhere. What do we do with these leaves? Fortunately, this lady next to me is going to provide some answers. She's Ann Fleener, Director of Education with, uh, are you with the Oklahoma City Botanical or Myriad Gardens? Myriad Botanical Gardens. The Myriad Botanical Gardens. Yep. There you have it, all of those. Thanks so much for stopping in today. We certainly appreciate that. And storms blew through you. last night. There was a lot of wind going on. And this time of the year, there's leaves falling everywhere. You have some answers of what we can do with these leaves. But first of we all, uh, let's just set this up by saying what we're about to talk about are some of the educational things that you provide over at the Myriad Gardens. You guys do offer various classes, right? We have lots of classes that we offer. Um, we have classes for school groups, of course, where they can come in for a tour. We've also got classes for adults and for families. So coming up just this Saturday, actually, we've still got a few openings left. It's about to sell out. We have a watercolor class for adults from 1 to 3. Um, we hope people will sign up for. We're also going to have skating lessons um, in, the, in December, which will be tons of fun. And then we've even got um, some just free programs that we try to offer. We have Bringing Books to Life, where we read books with kids. Um, we try to encourage literacy. We do some sort of craft that plays off of the themes of that. And in December, we're actually going to be doing a program called December Drop-Ins immediately after that. So Bringing Books to Life is each Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then December Drop-Ins are 10.30 to 11.30. We're going to make fun like pine cone ornaments, um, na other natural ornaments that kids can have learn about um, bringing nature inside. Well, that's a great idea for them to be exposed to the nature plus it's educational and here's something else you could do with these. Exactly, yeah. Now, do you skate? I haven't in a long time, but I'm <laughs> planning on getting out of there this morning. I, I can kind of move my way around the rink and that's about it. I yeah. can sort of get away from the sides, but yeah. there's no axles. I used or to be able to like do that. a turn. Oh, really? It's been a while. Well, that's about 10 steps more than me, <laughs> but that's cool. Other classes you guys have had uh, or will have gingerbread making classes and wreath making, mm -hmm. water. those are sold out. They are sold out. They all sold out this weekend. Everybody, I think, found out about them and immediately signed up. So hopefully, we'll probably offer those each year. Um, so you'll have to sign up next year and uh, check it out. We're also going to have an art camp for kids the first day of winter break. It's Friday, December 18th. Um, it'll be all day with a great group called Abracadoodle. So it's very educational and art-based, so they'll make lots of different art projects that they'll take home at the end of the day. And then we've got one more program called Handcrafted Gifts that we're doing with this great um, herb farmer, actually. We're gonna make our own bath bombs that are organic. We'll make our own herbal tea and a sleep pillow. So that would be a great gift for either yourself, if you're tired at the end of the holidays, or for somebody else. Which is kind of cool, you can get involved with making something organically like that, so to speak, but Absolutely. then also at the end of it, it's like, hey, now I have a gift I can give someone. Exactly. Well, speaking of such, there's a plenty of leaves around everywhere, and you have some ideas of how we can put these leaves to use, such as in a placemat. Yes, so this was our November sort of educational tip. Um, we've made placemats using just dried leaves. Um, it only takes a few materials, so you actually need cardstock. We use like a 12 by 12 sheet. You could get something a little bigger. I wouldn't go any smaller than that just because the plate, the plate sure. you want it to be able to be seen below that. Um, so you'll need cardstock or just heavy, thick material. Mod Podge, um, you can see we've got an industrial size here because <laughs> we love it at the gardens. You can get a smaller size. You never size. have too much Mod Podge, right? Exactly. <laughs> Not for us anyway. Um, then we've got a paintbrush. Um, and then I use my favorite uh, woody plant book. <laughs> the to Manual dry the leaves. of Woody Landscape Plants. You just this happen is, to have a as used a horticulturist. Of... You gotta have it. Yeah, used as in I've used it. Yeah, clearly. Um, so I just actually collected the leaves um, earlier this fall, stuck them in the book in between just each of the pages, and you leave them for a few days. They come out nice and flat and dried. Um, I have one question, real fast. I'm yes. looking at your placement here. What tree did this come from? Ah, this came from um, what we usually think of as the American sycamore, um, but it's actually the London plane tree. Um, they're both really similar, but a little different. So we actually have more London plane trees than American sycamore. I was about to say, here. do we have some of those down here? Because we shot something out on yeah. our uh, sidewalk a few weeks ago, and this massive leaf landed. I'm like, mm -hmm. where did this come from? That's this guy. Okay. Platinus occidentalis is American sycamore, and the other one is Platinus I'm forgetting. Just dropping knowledge know right now. I like it. But I don't remember. Um, we have a lot of them on our property, actually. Okay. So people always call them the sycamore. It's not, not a sycamore. London plane tree. Yeah. All right. Very um, good. So once you've let them dry, I would give it at least three days before you check. It might take a little bit more than that. You're just going to coat the front and back of each leaf with the Mod Podge. And then I sort of arrange them on the, t the 
paper as I liked, and then I ended up painting the whole thing with so Mod Podge. Paint over the top just of the leaves, the, the, whole the, the paper, everything. It dries clear. Um, you need to give it at least four hours to dry, or I just left it overnight. So you probably shouldn't do this the morning of Thanksgiving. You probably don't want to do this the morning of Thanksgiving. So we've got nine days before Thanksgiving. You've got plenty, <laughs> plenty of time plenty to do it time. this weekend. But oh, there's man. some other material that you could use that might be a little more that durable you can through use. the year. It's, it sort of essentially laminates it. Gotcha. Um, and you oh, would that would just go on top of it. Put it on I each see. side and cut around the leaves. So I was about to say, uh, the, uh, in fact, we're looking at some of the uh, illustrations you have from the website that you had cut yep. around the edges and it was a little bit. That's exactly what we used. Very, very cool. All right, now yes. what if you're not arts and craftsy and you're just like, okay, I have a whole bunch of leaves here. I know yeah. I shouldn't take them to the to the discard pile, what else could we be doing with these? So you can always just dry them. I actually have done this at my own house. Dry them and make them essentially a runner on your dining table. Sit them out with some acorns. That looks really nice. The other thing I've seen people do is they take like a knitting hoop and hang it and you just connect with fishing line the dried leaves and you can make sort of a chandelier. Um, or if you just are wanting to get rid of them, you don't want to bag these leaves. Um, they should instead go to the compost pile. Um, once they are bagged and sent off to the landfill, it's an anaerobic um, area, and so they're not going to break down in the landfill. They're going to end up just taking up more and more space. So definitely send them to the compost pile. And the compost pile certainly does uh, well, uh, eliminate them, uh, compose them, if you will. Absolutely. And you guys have uh, steps on how to build your own compost pile, which is a mixture of green we and do. brown. Yes, uh, you want to do a ratio of 30 to 1. So 30 brown things to one green thing. That's fresh mown grass, that's fresh green leaves, that's your uh, vegetable waste from your home yard or from your kitchen, and that's going to keep it from smelling. Essentially, if you have too many green things, it's not going to smell as good. You can also come and see our compost at the gardens, um, and we do composting workshops on a fairly regular basis. Think about this. In the last five minutes, how much you just learned? Ann Fleener <laughs> dropping knowledge here from the Myriad Guards. Thank you so much for stopping Absolutely. by. And wow, the manual of woody landscape plants, the, the industrial size Mod Podge. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. And happy holidays to you. Um, you too. We should mention that the classes, though, uh, a list of schedules and upcoming things can be found on your website, right? Uh -huh. They sure can. All right. Very good.